Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to my channel for another Hot Toys Marvel's What If 1-6 scale figure unboxing and review. Today we're taking a look at the diecast Infinity Ultron. I was so excited when this was announced. A big honkin' Ultron made of metal and being as badass as he was in the show? Say no more. Now I got mine from ToysWonderland.com. Link for that is in the description below. They do have pay in four and a loyalty program. While you're down there, why not hit that subscribe, bell notification icon, and join button so you're notified as soon as a brand new review goes live on the channel. As for the box art, stunning. The entire thing is done in a metallic finish. There are textured sections and there are smooth sections as well. We have an image of Infinity Ultron, and yes, that's the actual figure. A What If logo, Infinity Ultron, and down below, diecast. Up top, some pops of color featuring some characters that, unfortunately, I don't think Hot Toys are ever going to make. They did make Captain Carter, not Thor though, certainly not Gamora and Black Widow from the series, nor Strange Supreme, and certainly not The Watcher. We will have to wait and see. Maybe this is a hint. Maybe they're just teasing us. Maybe these are coming. Eventually. Or maybe not. What if figures, they're a hard sell, I understand. Where do they go? For a lot of people, they don't have a spot for them in the collection. You can't necessarily put the cartoon style figures next to the realistic style MCU characters. They just don't mesh well. On the side of the box, Infinity Ultron, and down below, once again, Diecast. The top and bottom of the box, they're done in gold. Very nice saturation and metallic. Then his name once again, in case you forgot that this was indeed Infinity Ultron. This is subtle. I dig it. It's Infinity Ultron's chest sculpted into the side of the foam core block holding the figure himself. Speaking of the figure himself, I've spent enough time ooing and ahhing about the box art. You get it, it looks cool. On the lid, Infinity Ultron once again. Also, this foam core block is pretty freaking heavy, so that tells me that this guy contains a substantial amount of die cast. Unlike Hot Toys' first Ultron, who was unapologetically plastic. Yeah, this guy is super heavy. What we are going to do now, though, is get all of his accessories laid out in the light box and take a closer look at everything he comes with. Starting off with the display base first. Normally, we get this style of display base with quarter scale figures. So that should give you a rough idea as to how tall he is. We have an image of Infinity Ultron on one side of the base, on the other, a What If logo. The logo itself is textured, whereas the rest of the image is very glossy. In the background, the cracked fractured multiverse, and it's very colorful. Around the front, Infinity Ultron, up top, a dynamic flight pole, and the Infinity Grabber. Why did I call it that? Well, you get the waist clamp plus the crotch grabber. The waist clamp itself, probably secure enough. Adding this makes it infinitely more secure. Wow, I am so sorry. He comes with this massive lance. This thing, I shit you not, is taller than Infinity Ultron himself. When you have him holding this, it's actually bigger than him. It's painted in this metallic gunmetal. We have some dark gunmetal and some lighter gunmetal. There are some watches in the crevices. It is very subtle though. One thing I don't love is there is a very visible seam line and some sprue marks. Not the worst thing in the world because you can rotate it and then you won't really see it at all. One side is nice and chalky coming down to a narrow point. The other is a little bit of a different design. This side is shorter than the other. Oh, and by the way, the bigger end, that's the top of the lance, if you're wondering. He does come with two sets of hands. Yes, only two. One pair that's fully articulated with multiple joints on each finger and for the thumb, one hinge joint and a ball joint at the bottom. So when you close up the fingers and the thumb, it's a pretty convincing close fist. Not perfect because it sticks out a little. Still, a lot better than Hot Toy's other attempts at articulated hands. They were so confident with these that the only other pair of hands they included were the gripping hands. These are cast in rubbery plastic, so the grip on the lance is a touch more secure. They are painted all in the same way though. Metallic gunmetal, washers in the crevices, and some nice shiny gold. What we are going to do now though is get 
Infinity Ultron himself out here. Standing straight up and down in the light box, no crazy poses or accessories or anything like that. Save for the cape. I had to do something with it. It was boring. It looked sad and lifeless. We will discuss the cape in just a second. The figure himself, he's bold. He's striking. He is imposing. This figure is tall and beefy. He has presence. The proportions sell that. The big shoulders, the tapered waist, and the super long legs. He is quite robotic, yet humanoid at the same time, much more so than standard Ultron from Age of Ultron. Then we get to the colour scheme. Red, gold, gunmetal, and the Infinity Stones all merged together. If there was ever a what if figure that was going to stand out in the display, it would be this guy. That's probably not the last time you're going to hear me say that either. If you're thinking, ooh, can this guy maybe, just maybe, go with my realistic MCU figures? Potentially. I think he stands much more of a chance than the other What If figures. They were super stylized, this guy is still stylized, yet not as much as the other releases. Up close and personal, kicking things off with Infinity Ultron's head sculpt. Or maybe I should be saying Vision's head sculpt. That quite clearly is Vision's head, Smack bang in the center of Ultron's mouth. Why does he look this way? Just go and watch the show and then you'll know exactly why. I dig the sculpt. It looks like Paul Bettany's vision. Maybe to its detriment though. Don't forget, this is supposed to be an animated version of the character. This sculpt, it's got skin texture. It's got a lot of detail and the likeness is strong. It also looks like he's smirking. Only on camera. In person, the smirk just isn't there. I don't know why it looks that way on camera. Maybe it's just how the light's hitting the sculpt. I also do have the LEDs turned on. His eyes are lit up, and the Mind Stone is as well. The head sculpt itself, you can first of all remove this, but it has a party piece. If you take off this back panel and you flick the switch, you'll notice the LEDs turn off. And then when you bring this piece back in, you pop it down, it actually lights up. There are contacts inside the head sculpt and inside the faceplate. So when it closes and it connects up, the power passes through. This is awesome. Unfortunately, another Hot Toys figure with a cape. Another terrible cape. This time, they really did try. The red is vibrant. It's got this satin finish to it, some pleats up the top, and some holes for this back spiky thing to poke through. There's also some gold metallic screen printing and wires along the edges and the bottom. The issue? It's too thick and it just drapes there like a bed sheet. It doesn't look natural at all. Maybe if you're getting crazy with the dynamic posing, then it'll look good. Just straight up and down if you want it to look natural hanging there, I don't think it's going to work super well. You can remove it, so if you decide, nah, -uh, this cape isn't for me, you unplug it on both sides, and you can just have him displayed sans the cape. It also doesn't look too bad displayed that way, you've got a lot of detail that would normally be hidden by the cape. So if you want to go without it, this, for me, yeah, it's an option. Oh, look at this guy's proportions. He's basically a big triangle. He's very broad at the shoulders and he tapers down at the waist like a bodybuilder. These proportions, very stylized, very exaggerated. That works for what if. It's a cartoon show. They don't need to be super realistic. The same goes for the finish. There is a lot of gunmetal and there is gold. There are also washers in the panel lines to bring out all the sculpted line work but no dirt and grime, no weathering, and no speckling. Normally, I would be jumping up and down, saying, why is it not more realistic? Why is there not more texture to it, more grit? This guy coming from animation? This finish works for me. If it was more detailed, it wouldn't be accurate to the show. Nor would it match the other figures from the same line. I do have the LEDs turned on for the Infinity Stones, and from the front, awesome. They're super bright and the translucent glossy plastic, it pops. On the side, from an off angle though, it doesn't look as great. The LED is very single direction, which means the more you turn it, the less lit up it's actually going to be. The batteries, they're also button cell and they're dying. 
the arms. There is a significant amount of die cast here for the bicep and also in the forearm, just a touch of metal. The shoulder pads are huge and there are some spikies. Please, when you're posing this guy, do be careful. There are pieces jutting out in multiple different areas. The back, the head sculpt, and also on the forearms. Coming down to the legs, I am starting to see the Age of Ultron Ultron design influence. They're quite long and very lanky. They are pretty simple. We do have some circular designs, which do remind me of retro robots. We also have some panel lines and a bit more gold. And it's just clicked. Now that I'm seeing the way the boots are set up, it almost looks like a medieval suit of armor. That is what they were going for. We've got the gold, we've got the gunmetal, those proportions, the big red cape, and the lance. I don't know how I missed it. It's a freaking dead giveaway. It was staring right at me. Unfortunately, on the underside of his boots, though, there is no detail. They're completely smooth. Perhaps that was the correct way to go. We've already discussed that adding more detail to an animated figure like this guy, not always the right option. Why the heck are we back up here with the head sculpt seeing as though we have discussed it? I know, I just wanted to talk about the LEDs for one second. When you have them turned off, oh no, he looks completely dead and that, not my favorite thing. When you turn the LEDs on, okay, it looks way better. He now has eyes and the Mind Stone is lit up. Plus, the whole thing with the contacts and the faceplate, dope as heck. However, I still would have liked to have seen painted eyes, or at the very least, swap out eyes. So if you don't have the LEDs turned on, he doesn't look completely dead. Oh, and on the underside of the faceplate, there is padding. So sliding this down over his vision sculpt shouldn't do any damage. For a quick side-by-side -side comparison, this is interesting. Infinity Ultron. On the left, I could have sworn was going to be the taller of the two. He's not. MCU Ultron from Age of Ultron, he takes that crown. He's taller. His proportions are more realistic, as far as a giant silver robot can be. You've got more detail to look at, and there are certain sections that you can see right through. There are holes in the design. That can't have been easy to engineer. He doesn't get a lot of love. He is made of plastic. Whereas Infinity Ultron... There is a lot of metal here, he's nice and heavy. He stands out for his own reasons, the design being simplified for one, the infinity stones, the way they light up, the gunmetal and gold color combo, that red cape. There is no denying he is absolutely going to pop. This is what you're all really here to see, I'm sure. Infinity Ultron, Zombie Hunter Spidey, Captain Carter, Steve Rogers, and the Hydra Stomper, all from the What If line. Seeing all of these characters standing together in this animation style, it all just clicks. It makes so much sense. Is Hot Toys going to make more figures from What If? Probably, and I really hope they do, because this line so far is pretty freaking awesome. Going over articulation, I have left the cape off. I just really didn't want it getting in our way, flapping around in the background. Starting off with the head sculpt, it's on a big neck with a double ball pick. Looking forward to there, looking up to there, swivel and pivot side to side. For the arms, a couple of things to note. Number one, move the shoulder pad, because the last thing you want is it scratching anything or colliding with anything when you're trying to move the arm itself. Number two, pull the arm out to maximize your range of motion. Going up to there, they will go forward and back, and these pieces, front and back, they're on springs. They should move out of your way. You have a butterfly joint at the shoulder that also hinges up and down. Swivel at the bicep underneath this shoulder pad. It's kind of tricky to move on mine, but trust me, the joint is there. Double bend at the elbow, going past 90. For the wrist peg, a big honk and ball joint. Speaking of ball joints for the torso, we have two. One at the midsection and one at the waist. Crunching forward to there, going back to there, a little bit gappy down below. Swivel and pivot side to side. The legs drop down, they go forward, they go out, swivel at the upper thigh and also at the ball joint underneath this little hip skirt piece. Double bend at the knee going past 90 on ratchets. Then for the feet, forward and back, some swivel, some ankle rocker, and toe articulation. Moving on to the three cool and three annoying things. The first annoying thing is the cape material. It just doesn't drape well. It works fine in dynamic poses, it's got wires. Just draping there, it's too thick and too structured. 
It almost reminds me of a bed sheet. The second annoying thing is the design for the shoulders. They had to stick to the animation design, I'm well aware. In figure format, it just doesn't work. They're too big, they're too bulky, and they don't have the right joints. They get in the way constantly. The third annoying thing is the shape of the legs. For some weird reason, they're almost chicken-legged. They go back and they don't just sit straight up and down. So when you're trying to have him standing straight up and down, they might look a little bit funky. The first cool thing, you knew this was going to happen. It's the way the contacts work in the head sculpt. I showed you this earlier just one more time because I do love it. When you pop the mask on and the contacts align, the eyes light up and the Mind Stone does too. The second cool thing, if you are fed up with the cape like I am, is that it's very easy to remove. You lift it up over these spikes, and you take the darn thing off. The third cool thing is the die-cast content. There is seriously a lot of metal here. Down here at the shins, metal. Thighs, metal. Biceps, metal. The weight? When you pick this guy up out of the box, you're going to be pleasantly surprised. I know that because I was. Wrapping up on Hot Toys, Infinity Ultron from Marvel's What If. That animated show on Disney Plus that I don't think everyone has seen. I have seen it, a lot of collectors have seen it, but surely not everyone. Because this guy didn't sell anywhere near as well as I thought he was going to. It's Ultron in this medieval style with gunmetal and gold accents, a red cape, and a massive lance. Plus Vision's head sculpt inside the Ultron faceplate. What's not to love? I could have sworn that this guy was going to fly off the shelves and even people who don't have a What If collection were going to get him. Nobody's really talking about him, it's been relatively quiet. This figure though, just from a pure technical perspective, impressive. Tall, beefy, the proportions are interesting, the figure himself is interesting, the paint is on point, and there is a lot of metal here. This guy is a heavy figure. The light-up effect is dope when it's on. The batteries, being button cells, they die so quickly, and that is a darn shame. If only they'd gone with USB here. If you could have plugged him in, charged him up, removed the cable, and pushed one button to turn him on, that would have been my ideal situation. You could have flicked the switch and had him on for a much longer period of time as compared to the button cells. Am I complaining too much about the button cell batteries? Yeah, probably. Still, it's a massive bugbear. It's the one thing that drives me crazy here. Everything else is so good that I would recommend getting him even if you don't have a What If collection. If you like Ultron, if you like Vision, if you like figures that are visually interesting and are going to set your collection apart, this guy could potentially be the one for you. Now I got mine from toyswonderland.com. Link for that is in the description below. They have pay in for and a loyalty program. While you're down there, why not hit that subscribe, bell notification icon, and join button. If you like the sound of seeing your name in the end credits of my reviews. Like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll catch you in the next video.